How'd the whole thing come about? Um, so it was I, one of the first things that I heard of when I moved, I moved here in 2015. It was one of the first things that I heard of is like, oh, have you been a whiskey jam yet? Yep. We started in 2011 and it was uh, Josh Hogue and myself. We spent a lot of time drinking at Losers, really, yeah. uh, in the days that we should have heard that. Guilty. been writing songs. In the, I remember sitting out on the patio and yelling up at the, the lone apartment building in that part of town, just really foolish stuff. But we spent so much time there, got into the winter, and football season, we were spending a lot of time at winters watching uh, NFL. And so the football season started coming to an end. We're like, man, I want to still hang out here. Maybe we can talk them into, um, I don't know, like a picture of beer or a bar tab in exchange for a night of music. Because I was doing cover gigs on four, three or four nights a week at that point, and Josh knew a lot of people. So we could kind of combine that. And yeah, it just it blew up immediately because it was in a weird spot. It was kind of a, we slipped the gap as far as social media. You know, Twitter was around, but text messaging was still such a big deal. Blackberry Messenger and those group chats were like the original, really like the original group chats were right. such a big thing. And so we just got on the phone like, hey, come hang out with us and our buddies. And we invited all our friends. And at that point in time, there was so many talented young people uh, and on a Monday night, there was nothing much else going on. They just kind of showed up and um, the foundation was built so early to be so fun and cool. And we just rode that out for a couple of years. And at that point it was set. Um, but yeah, they, it, it really originated out of like wanting to hang out with our friends and party on a Monday. Yeah. And the people that were around to do it ended up being some of the more, I guess, the folks. influential yeah. up and comers. Was it, was it immediately every Monday? Or was that, has you done it every week since the first week up yeah. until quarantine? Yeah. We had, um, I don't even know how it came about. We were coming, we were out of town in Chicago for the weekend and we're coming back. And we're like, let's just do that thing tonight. You know, Monday night's a good night because everybody's off the road. Yeah. That was the, that that's, was the justification. So that's right. you really did. I mean, we, it was initially going to be invite a bunch of writers and invite a bunch of artists and band, like, uh, touring musicians so drummers and guitarists and bass players and we would have the stuff there and they could just hop up and play so if whatever say chris young wanted to get up and play then keo stroud and eddie robinson could play drums right. and guitar backing him up and everybody was friends it immediately evolved past that past the after the first night it was like okay this is crazy because you know you got a room full of everybody and you want to hear everybody sing you want to hear everybody play everybody wants to get their chance like okay as much as we didn't want this to be like a come and sign your name up we're going to have to schedule it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just kind of worked out to where Monday night was the the move. And after we got going for a little while, it's funny. I, when we started out, I was like, this is so cool. And then a couple months into it, I was like, this will never last. So I quit keeping records of who played. And there's like a little blank spot <laughs> from probably March to May in our real formative early days. And that was those days when like the fray and one Republic would come out and stuff like crazy stuff would happen um, because it was still so incredibly underground and, and new and after that initial kind of craziness in the in the, the the blind spot that I've got on the on my records, I was like, okay, this is a serious deal. You know, I've been around town long enough to know that this is something special. And it's honestly been nine and a half years since then, just trying to maintain that, like keep that that bubble in the air, uh, keep it going. So it cool, it's so awesome. I mean, yeah, I was honored the first time I got to play whiskey jam because. Obviously, me and Mitchell have been writing a ton of songs or whatever, and, and I just I psyched myself up for that too. Like yeah, we, we're rehearsing all that. And I probably bombed, but I was probably rapping on acoustic guitar or something like that. Well, it's so much fun, man, and it's it it's over before you know it. It's three songs. There's like little, um, uh, if it's great because if you if you do screw up, nobody's gonna really remember it, right? But if you do awesome, it's like you it's the Costanza thing. You leave them laughing. You know, you have just enough to give them like, oh my gosh. I want to hear more of that. I want to hear that same thing over and over again. Right. It's like, sorry, we got to go. You know? Just being earnest. Just being earnest. Just being earnest. Just being earnest.